but we can get out there, reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Welcome back to our special on Tim Walls. Who is this guy? I don't know if anyone knows him as a candidate better than Dr. Scott Jensen, who ran against him for governor of Minnesota. Dr. Jensen, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. And thanks for having me on, Mike. My pleasure. What's the most important thing we need to know about uh, Tim Walls? I think that he's a Teflon man. I think that if you look at what he's been able to do, when he makes a mistake, he's generally able to sidestep any responsibility. He's he's very good. He's affable. He's he bloviates. Uh, he talks extemporaneously. But I think at the end of the day, nothing sticks. And in Minnesota, the media has been very friendly to him and willing to sort of let him get off the hook. The news cycles that normally affect Tim Walls that are adverse usually last two or three days max, and they move on. I think other things, though, that people shouldn't look for a deep-seated set of convictions that are going to drive his decision-making. I think what they're going to find is more of a zeitgeist kind of approach. What is going on in the moment? What's the feeling of if you will, the voters today. He's more of a zeitgeist kind of person. He's not big on accountability. Hundreds of millions of dollars in Minnesota have been squandered or fraudulently stolen. Uh, education performance has never been worse. Uh, Inflation-wise, gas, groceries, and energy and housing costs in Minnesota have skyrocketed. In terms of education, we're no longer one of the top tier education states we're now competing to try to stay in the middle at least a little bit the rule of law has been forfeited in the sense that the police have been undercut tim walls has been friendly with those who talk about defunding the police and we paid a deep price but i think the other thing that's interesting is the blame game tim walls when he didn't call the national guardian to help stop the rioting in May of 2020. It wasn't his fault. It was because the National Guard was comprised of a bunch of 19-year-old cooks. When the streets continued to burn, it wasn't his fault. It was Mayor Jacob Fry's fault. When it came to his executive orders that backfired, it wasn't his fault. It was that someone did something wrong, and he would, if you will, walk it back without owning it. So I think from my perspective, Tim Walls has a weird capability to sidestep culpability. We've been making the point here and on the radio that Tim Walls has been making Minnesota more like California, right? Sanctuary city for illegals, all this transgender stuff, tampons and bathrooms, like ba- bathrooms for kids, like like, we- like crazy weird stuff. But when I'm thinking of California, Gavin Newsom has a similar ability where something terrible happens and there's no accountability. Now, do you account to that the media in California with Newsom or Minnesota with Walls, the media and their lack of holding them accountable? Or is there something special about Tim Walls that he's so skilled or conniving or whatever that he's able to get around uh, tough accountability? No, I think this one definitely has to go to the media. The, the media has let Tim Walls skate, skate free over and over again. The national media this time around is going to be far more investigative. And I think Tim Walls is going to find it uncomfortable because he has been getting a free ride. And I don't think the national media will allow that. Yeah, that's right. Let's hope. Uh, what, What about his affability? I'm trying to think of why Kamala would choose him. And I think it's to counter the J.D. Vance Midwest thing, right? And he has this kind of like folksy shtick thing that he does. What have you noticed knowing him so intimately on the campaign trail? Well, he's friendly and he does well that way. And I don't think Kamala Harris has to worry about Tim Walls upstaging her. He's going to play second fiddle. He knows the rules. He knows the game. I think he's thrilled to be on this stage. I think that both Kamala Harris and Tim Walls can talk for several minutes and not say much. I mean, Kamala Harris can make a speech out of the word unburdened, 
uh, Tim Walls can make a word salad out of a crisis issue such as kids' education and dismiss the entire affair by saying, well, kids really haven't missed much school. It, he had a famous quote in 2022 saying, 80% of the kids in Minnesota missed less than 10 days of school during COVID pandemic when the fact was most kids in Minnesota missed a full year of school. So I think from that perspective, Kamala and Tim are similar. They, they can go on and on and say very little. And in that regard, it's not threatening. Last question for you. We had a caller on the radio from Minnesota talk about Walls' comment during the campaign that, oh, those people out, out what do they call it, out state uh, in the country, there's just, that's just where there's just rocks and cows out there. What do you make of that comment? Tim Walls makes it sound like he's the friend of the farmer, the everyday person, the greater Minnesota person, that he's going to be able to woo that vote. An awful lot of people don't realize that when I ran against him in 2022, we beat him in his own district. In Congressional District 1, the southern part of Minnesota, he won that six times in Congress. He won it the first time he ran for governor. We beat him by eight points in that area. The people that knew him best wanted him least. He called them rocks and cows because they dared to disagree with him. There's no question when Tim Walls is backed into a corner, he will come out with some of these words that just aren't fair. He doesn't want to be called names, but he'll call other people's names. But the bottom line is the people who knew Tim Walls best said no thank you to a second term for a governor. But unfortunately, Minneapolis and St. Paul carried the day predominantly. Uh, uh, Dr. Scott Jensen, Ranzi Anson in 2022. Uh, Dr. Jensen, I hope Kamala and Walls lose and you can run against Walls again and uh, win that governorship uh, back, sir. Thank Dr. You. Scott Jensen, thank you very much for your time. Nothing like this has ever been done before. It's called Politics by Faith with me, Mike Slater. We are bombarded with news all day long. And I don't know about you, but it makes me anxious and worried and all these not good feelings. So in Politics by Faith, we take the news of the day, we lament the brokenness of it, and then we take the turn and we give you a biblical or historical perspective. And hopefully that will bring you some peace so that you can fall asleep at night and reminding, of, uh, reminding you of what is in your control and also what is not. Hopefully this will change our perspective of how we look at the stories of the day. Politics by Faith is available now everywhere you download podcasts. Politics by Faith with Mike Slater.